What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Jug Drummer TV, where I give my initial reactions, my hot takes, and my analysis on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow, if I stick around that long. I'm a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been those things for the last 20 years. Welcome to episode 50 of my React series. Yay! So I started this channel in May of last year, and I have now reached an arbitrary number that probably doesn't mean anything, but I will never pass up a chance to get dressed up. This episode is going to be pretty ridiculous because I'm going to get very meta and I'm going to react to me. So before we get into it, I'm going to blur the name of this band and the name of the song so I can continue to stay anonymous. I know that's silly to be a YouTuber and try to stay anonymous, but I am trying to. Side note, all you people who have found me on Instagram, the reason why I've not added you is because I am trying to stay as anonymous as possible, and my Instagram is going to be very boring for you because there's very little music stuff on there. My Instagram really is for all of my woodworking projects that I do, and y'all don't want to see that. Also, for all of you out there who think I sound like Theo Vaughn, not really, I mean, I'm Southern, obviously, but that's just a lot of you people out there not knowing your Southern accents. It's not really your fault because, like, only other people that you hear that has, like, Southern accents are, like, Theo Vaughn, Matthew McConaughey, and whoever played Ainsley Hayes on West Wing. If you've watched any of my videos before, the band we're going to watch today is the band that I have been in for, in April, six years. It's the one that we toured regionally a lot. We got to play a bunch of cool festivals. And the thing we're going to be watching today is us playing on NPR's Mountain Stage, which is probably the pinnacle that this band got to. If you don't know what Mountain Stage is, it is an NPR show that is usually played on Sundays. It's got a listenership of like 300,000 people. And trust me, if you are, you know, the, the local, local, regionally touring act as we were and drummer as I am, when you know you are playing live to 200 to 300,000 people, it will get in your head. But this is the second time I've played this uh, particular show because I played it with another band like uh, four or five years before this uh, taping. This taping is from 2016 and I was definitely more scared the first time. This time I was like, yeah, I got this. I've played in front of 200 and 300,000 people before. It's no problem. But to be honest, I was still a little scared. So, before we get into watching me, uh, I would like to remind everyone to please like, comment, and share. Give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. Please check out my Patreon. I also have a PayPal option if you're interested in that. Let's watch Steve from Junk Drummer TV play some drums. That is a good looking drummer right there. Woo! Drummer that's got a few more LBs on him than he does now. To find my way Visions draw me to and from As I watch my mind become a cloudy maze uh, You saw me there, I was asking for more bass Usually, uh, I'm always asking for ma more bass in my uh, monitor system I like to hear bass the loudest And the vocals the loudest and everything Like a step underneath that Damn good looking drummer You can tell we're in six right here. This is the band that you've heard me talk about. This this music was kind of music for the Misfit Toys. We were kind of a freak show. Because none of our music sounds alike. This is the only song we play that sounds like that. It sounds like this. Okay, so right there, I'm going to be able to really talk about my influences. And uh, uh, right there, uh, that intro starts out in five. And uh, then the uh, pre-chorus, which, which, which is what we just went to there, is in 6-8. And then the verse is in 5. Now, if you'll notice, I'll, I might bring this back. Uh, during the musical interlude, which is kind of the pre-verse, I've got the hi-hats uh, open and, you know, a sloshy to kind of fill up the sound. And as soon as our lead singer here, who is uh, wonderfully dressed, as you can see, uh, as soon as he started singing, I made the hi-hat tight and I dropped the volume. That, my friends, is 90s uh, loud, soft, loud. That is Pixies influence. That is, uh, for me, Dave Grohl influenced. Uh, dynamics. We play with dynamics really, uh, uh, we play with dynamics a lot in this band. Words, tongues, thoughts, and limbs. 
Okay, so you can hear that this sound, this song is in five. The verse is. This is going to switch in between five and six a lot. <laughs> I miss these cats. This band's on hiatus. I'm not sure if we're going to play again. We hit it really hard for five years and, you know, got to do some really cool things but never really busted through. Be able to do this you know full time okay so right there you've seen uh, me play through three different sections and I really come from the school of each section should have a signature drum part that's that is uh, uh, unique to that part uh, during the 5-8 right there we'll talk about the 5-8 when it comes back in again and then the pre-chorus, which is what uh, I played on the uh, ride cymbal and was just going, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then here we go to what is the chorus and I switch to the hi-hat and I play what would uh, sound like a traditional blues groove. If you didn't hear what the, you know, what music was going on over top of it, I go, mm, 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 mm. So I've set myself up. I have three different grooves that goes with each one of those parts. I'm a big fan of that. I like to think that if you could take the music away and just listen to the drums, you could follow the form. That's classic Ringo Starr. That's classic Dave Grohl. That's classic Neil Peart. Okay, so before we get into what's about to be uh, the, the violin solo, uh, I uh, helped write and arrange this song with the bass player and the guitar player. Uh, I now can get to really talk intimately about the beginning of a song or the you know how a song develops. Uh, the, uh, I will be in this band six years in April, and one of the, the, the very first practice I ever went to, this lick... The 5-8 lick was the first thing that we ever worked on. It was just like a thing that that man had been kicking around at the time. And then I joined and they were, you know, knew that I had some Latin stuff that I knew how to play. And the lead singer, uh, uh, guitar player, who is the mastermind behind this band, you know, he, he writes all the lyrics. And, and the the big biggest part of the music, me and the bass player comes in and we, you know, uh, help with arrangements and such. Uh, he wanted to play a fucking bossa nova in 5-8. And the first thing that I play with this band is he's like, hey, man, can you like play like a boss in 5-8? It's like, I mean, well, I mean, I guess we'll see. So this song, the main 5-8 riff of this started out as a bossa nova. And we wrote on this song on and off for probably a year. This is what you're seeing here is a year's worth of uh, uh writing rewriting there's like maybe two other versions of this song that that happened and this was the thing that got solidified when we were making the record for this we were still writing this song when we went in to the recording studio and it was finished after a day of tracking all day with the bass and the drums and we finished it that night and it's it's interesting if you've been in an original band some songs write themselves in five minutes and some songs you got to beat the shit out of for months and months and sometimes almost a year to get that finished product that you're trying to get to. Okay, I know I'm stopping a lot, but I'm talking about myself here, being a little indulgent here, uh, you know, uh, bear with me. Uh, what happened right there is I am playing just a marching band thing. Uh, we play this... Uh, 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 interlude with the violinist and for me to when I set that up you know we're playing in 6-8 right here you know I play what's called a tap roll I go mm, 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 mm. you know one two three four five six one that's a tap roll if you've been in marching band that's not a big deal at all you play an accent and you start the roll on your left hand mm, mm, mm. and that's what you're seeing, seeing right there I'll bring this back just a little bit Right there. Oh, this violinist was wonderful. She had to step away the, from the band not long after this. 
she had a kid that got just too old enough for her to be on the road all the time. And we replaced her with another fantastic new uh, fiddler, fiddler violinist. So that whole thing was in five. I drop out. That bass distortion there was my idea. The bass distortion is amazing. Okay, so let's talk about the verse right here. This verse is in 5-8. Or right, talk about a couple things. First, if you've seen any of my other Danny Carey videos, I talk about how he is an expert in playing in odd times in general, but one of the things that he does wonderfully when he's playing in odd times is what makes learning Danny Carey songs fucking nearly impossible, just learning them by ear, is he masks his time signature so well. When he plays something in seven, it's not usually such an obvious seven or if something's in like 15 16 it's usually not an obvious 15 and 16. the way that i'm playing this 5 8 right here i might as well be holding up a big ass sign that says hey everybody i'm playing in 5 8. that is the, one of the that's an obvious time signature that i'm playing in i'm going you know uh, 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 one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five one and that is an obvious 5-8. I, like, I always call uh, time signatures, like uh, odd time signatures that are so obvious like that, I call that like a hard something. That's like a hard 5-8. That's an obvious hard 5-8 that I'm playing right here. Second part of this, this is the third time that I'm playing this verse. The first two times I played this verse, I opened the hi-hat every fourth measure. And because now, you know, that rule of three, we're now playing it a third time. We've really dropped the volume now because now, uh, again, that 90s thing, you know, uh, drop the volume for the verse and smash their heads with the chorus. So you have a big crescendo ability uh, to get there with. And I'm dropping the volume way, way down. The whole band's drop their volume way down because we all know that we're going to hit that chorus or that pre-chorus and then that chorus and just hit it really big. But because I'm playing this the third time when I play that lick, uh, 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 I'm now opening the hi-hat every measure. The first two times I opened it every fourth measure. I'm a big fan or believer of if you do a thing three times, that third time, it's screaming for something to differentiate itself from the first two parts. So who am I to judge the world spoken quietly between gods and men? I love playing drums. I love playing songs and I love playing music with my friends. I'm going home when the days are long. Maybe I will see you. You wanna back to that chorus, now I'll go back to that hi-hat. You know, differentiate those things. Uh, on the hundredth episode, I'm gonna do this again, and I must uh, choose a song so you can get to hear our back uh, backup singer here. Because she's amazing and she's kind of doing very little on this. She's playing some uh, you know, percussion with me. My mom and dad was in the crowd at this show. My aunt was there. Who gave me my first record. This was a big. This was a big day for me. Yeah, like that's a whole, that is, that is, uh, you know, seven, eight people on stage being like, we got through that. We did it. Fuck th that. Yes. Uh, man, that brings, that brings me back. That band hasn't played since Halloween. Again, that band might kind of be done. I'm not sure. But we hit it hard for five years. Uh, that's one of my favorite bands that I've ever been in. I've just now started playing in another band that's actually an old band that's getting back together. Uh, but I will always uh, cherish uh, the memories of that band. Like I said, that band we played, uh, you know, almost every weekend. You know, there was three or four straight years where we played like 100 plus shows like out of town. We put like 200,000 miles on a 15 passenger van. 
uh, we were, you know, that regionally touring act that you just stumble into a bar and and, and see and be like, well, that's a, you know, that's a thing I haven't seen before. That band's very, very uh, uh, genre bending, which is when we finally got to the level of being able to talk to A&R people and record label types. Uh, we found that the fact that every song almost sounds completely different is the worst possible way to get any kind of record deal or any kind of footing in a music industry office because we were very hard to figure out because you couldn't just say, hey, this band sounds like this or this band sounds like that. We would get the arcade fire thing a lot and I could kind of see it a little bit. I think it's just because we had a bunch of disparate uh, uh, music uh, instruments on stage, you know. We are uh, bass drums, guitar, and the guitar player a lot of times plays a nylon string classical guitar. We had a violinist and trumpet, trombone, and the uh, trumpet player, or trombone player would play uh, uh, accordion, and the trumpet player would play glockenspiel. So we'd kind of get that that feel, and that would be our end. Like, well, you know, if you like Arcade Fire, A and R person, or record label thing, uh, you know, maybe you would get us. So there you go. That's my 50th episode. Uh, I really enjoyed that. That was a very self-indulgent episode. But this episode is also for a lot of those uh, haters in the comments who don't think that I'm actually a drum teacher or who I uh, think I actually don't play music. There you go. Now you can tell me how much I suck. But seriously, after uh, 50 episodes, uh, I'll almost have... I have 13,000 subs right now. I almost have 2 million views. It, this channel is doing far better than I ever thought it would. And it's all because of you. I would like to thank everyone who's uh, watched any of my videos. I'm not stopping anytime soon because I really, really dig this. Uh, thanks to everyone who has liked, commented, and shared. And uh, give me a double tap on the subscription and the notification bell. And thanks to all those commenters who have, you know, fucking said they thought that I was the worst person on YouTube, man, thanks for, uh, thanks too, because your comments still help me in the algorithm, so, uh, there you go, Steve from Junk Drummer TV, play some drums, and remember, keep practicing until it's easy.